Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the main stage. Um, I know there was a little bit of confusion. Uh, that moment was just to give everyone a quick tutorial of um, the Remo platform because we do want to do some good networking after the panel conversation. And I just want to make sure everyone feels comfortable before we force the networking. Um, but without further ado, the formal presentation and panel discussion is going to um, start. We are very excited to have some great speakers. Um, but first, I want to welcome to the stage Dean Nolan, the Executive Director of PACELT, a local organization here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, he is also one of our event partners for tonight. So if Dean can join me up here on the stage for a quick minute, um, and we'll get started. Hey, hey, thanks, Ashley. Hey, my name is Dean Nolan, and I am the Executive Director of PACELT and one of the co-hosts for tonight's event. Um, PACLT is a professional payments organization based here in Charlotte, and our mission is really to share the latest events and, up, and hot topics in payments with our members and others. And tonight, we're really excited to have an opportunity, have a great panel join us to talk about contactless payments. And so without any further ado, I'd like to hand, turn this over to Bob Bruark from KPMG, who's going to be the moderator of our panel tonight and guide us through the discussion. So. Bob, welcome, and Ashley, I think uh, if you could uh, transfer from me over to Bob, that'd be perfect timing. Okay, I think I'm still on stage, huh? So, um, <laughs> let's see here, let's see here. Yeah, so, so while we're waiting here, just to give you a quick update, in, uh, our next event is going to be on March, for anybody interested, our next PACLT event will be on March 4th. Uh, we'll be talking about cryptocurrency. If you want more information on that, follow us on LinkedIn or join us at um, our, pay, our website, which is www.paclt.com. So with that said, Bob, I'll hand it over to you now. Thanks a lot, Dean. I really appreciate it. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to our webinar on contactless payments. Uh, I'm Bob Ruark. I'm a principal with KPMG. I run the banking and uh, payments practice for the strategy organization at KPMG. I'm also the US FinTech leader uh, for the firm. I'm really uh, pleased to have three esteemed guests with us today. Uh, Giovanni Chiaccia from SAFE, a biometric FinTech company. Nadan Seth, who's the SVP and head of global e-commerce at Fiserv, and Sadiq Mohammed, VP of global uh, e-commerce at MasterCard. So gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, before we start, I wanna take a brief moment and let each panelist introduce themselves, and then we'll jump into the presentation. So I'll start with you, Giovanni, and then we'll move to Nadan and then Sadiq. So take it away, Giovanni. Thanks, Bob. So it's uh, uh, very nice to be here participating in this event. My name is Giovanni. I'm a co-founder and CTO at SAFE. And uh, we basically at SAFE, we do facial recognition based payments uh, as a service. And uh, it's very nice to be here talking about contactless payments, given that facial biometric is, is intrinsically contactless. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Nandan Sheth. Delighted to be here. Uh, thanks for inviting us. I work at Fiserv. We're one of the largest fintechs in the world. My responsibilities are uh, omni-channel and e-commerce, and we've seen an explosive growth in contactless commerce and contactless payments. So delighted to share some of my thoughts with you today. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Sadiq Mohammed from MasterCard. I head uh, global EMV products and services, uh, which includes contact, contactless cards, mobile and wearable devices. Uh, I've been with MasterCard for 11 years, and I'm super excited to see the growth uh, trajectory of contactless payments. And thanks, Bob, for the opportunity to you know contribute on this panel. Thank you all. I'm going to try and uh, share my screen to just show a couple slides here for a moment. 
and I don't know if can can you guys see my screen or no? Not yet. Okay. Not yet. How about now? Yep, something's happening. We see it. Yeah, we see it. Very good. Okay. Well, thanks, everybody. Again, um, I just wanted to, before we jump into it, I just wanted to provide a, a quick overview. Uh, the payment market was trending toward contactless prior to the COVID-19 pandemic. However, COVID has really accelerated that trend. Uh, in a recent survey in April, 38% of consumers felt like contactless payment that feature was table stakes. And since the pandemic, usage of contactless, both from a card standpoint and within wallets, has exploded. Also, a recent report shows that contactless payments will grow from about $178 billion in 2020 to $1.5 trillion by 2024. And we know from data provided by Fiserv in an October 2020 Spendthrift report that since the pandemic, cash usage has dropped incredibly by 917 basis points, while contactless payments share of total transactions have grown rapidly. Contactless NFC payments have grown 1.6 times the overall growth in transactions, and mobile e-commerce transactions have grown two times the overall market. So the trends have been moving favorably for contactless for some time, and they're accelerating due to the due to the pandemic and the related changes in customer behavior and changes in the way that consumers have, uh, have changed their shopping habits. With that, I want to jump into the questions. Um, and we'll start with Don. Given that uh, we just saw what is going on with contactless payment uh, volume and that it's growing and that consumers are increasingly interested in contactless. I'd be interested in the Don as the largest merchant processor in the US. Can you discuss what you're seeing in the market with your clients? Are you seeing the same yeah, yeah. increase? Yeah. So Bob, absolutely. Um, you're you're right. There is an explosive growth in contactless, omni-channel e-commerce driven by uh, the need that was created based on the pandemic. As we think about contactless, at least in our vernacular and with our merchants being some of the largest brands in the country, the, the pivot that's, that's, that's going on in the industry around contactless is the shift from contactless to touchless. So Giovanni's company who's doing um, facial recognition payments, uh, I wanna make sure that at least in my mind, that is included in touchless. So if we think about contactless, it's NFC plus non NFC payment methods. And based on 2020, uh, the global usage of touchless saw about a 30% growth in our portfolio which is fairly significant because the growth prior to that was, at least in our portfolio, high single digits. Um, number two, uh, we saw the growth in omni-channel uh, within certain verticals at about 100%. So if you think about the quick service restaurant vertical, the grocery vertical, there was an explosive growth in omni-channel and many of those omni-channel transactions were touchless or contactless. So as we think about the use cases and the verticals around these use cases, uh, we kind of bucket them in the following fashion. We've seen a lot of interest, Bob, from our merchants around curbside pickup. So order on your mobile phone and pick up curbside. And the industries there, the obvious ones are obviously grocery, but home improvement, we have some of the largest home improvement brands. Their curbside pickup went up 250%. And then big box retailers, so think about a Target or think about even a Best Buy. Again, the curbside pickup uh, exploded. But what's really interesting is 
they they responded really quickly. So me personally, I went to buy a router because we all want to make sure our bandwidth is stable. And I went to Best Buy and I opened up my trunk and they put my router in my trunk. Number two, we've seen a lot of order ahead in the restaurant segment. And a lot of that order ahead also drives contactless and touchless. So we have uh, about nine of the top 15 quick service restaurant brands in, in the world as clients. And contactless payments within that segment, again, is, is up exponentially. Number two, around order, order ahead, small business restaurants always also saw a huge explosive growth in order ahead. Number three, the use of wallets and NFC at face-to-face -face also went up significantly. So I've been in the payments industry for 20 years, and the only time I, I use my um, card for a contactless payment is when I go back to London, which is where I'm from. And, and I kind of, it dawned on me that I could do the same at Walmart or, or at Whole Foods. And I've started to use contactless almost 60% of the time when I want to use my card. But I've also accelerated the use of, um, I'm an Apple user, the use of Apple Pay. So we've also seen that trend at the point of sale and face-to-face -face touchless payments are also going up. And then the last segment is P2P. So we're the backbone for a P2P network or a person-to-person -person network called Zelle. And, and the, the number of Zelle transactions using uh, kind of the Zelle technology uh, and using kind of non-contact mechanisms of payments has gone up almost 250%. So the last point I want to make is what are some of the technologies, at least that we're seeing within our merchants that are driving touchless? Um, I'm sure Sadiq will talk about NFC, so I'll leave that for him. But outside of NFC, some of the technologies that we're seeing driving change is number one, QR. There is a strong interest in QR technology and using QR as a mechanism to make a payment. So if you think about what Walmart has done, if you've ever used Walmart Pay, they present the QR on the terminal and then the phone um, uh, kind of overlays the QR and the payment is done in the cloud. So technically it's a face-to-face -face payment, but it's using QR. Number two is proximity. So one of our largest clients is Chick-fil-A. So if you've ever bought a Chick-fil-A sandwich on your mobile using their app, you may not know this, the payment transaction only clears or goes out for approval when you break the geolocation of the restaurant that you've selected. And there are two reasons for that. They wanna make sure that you're at the right restaurant, but they also wanna make sure that your food is hot. In our vernacular, and our merchant's vernacular, that's a touchless payment too. And then the last thing is we've been experimenting with conversational commerce. So if you picked up on what we did with Amazon and Alexa, if you have an Alexa unit on your phone or in your car, try this. Go to an Exxon uh, gas station in the United States and say, Alexa, pay for gas. It will tell you where you are. It will say which pump. You put in pump number five. Automatically, the pump invokes. You can pump gas and drive away without pulling out your car. So I guess in summary, what I would say, it's a very exciting time to be in touchless payments. The transformation is way beyond NFC and the merchant interest across verticals is very strong. Thanks, that, that's great, a, a great perspective. You really covered a lot of ground there. I think I'll turn it over to Sadiq now. Sadiq, maybe provide the perspective from the global network provider space and what you're seeing from a contactless uh, perspective. Absolutely. Thanks, uh, Bob and Nandan. Absolutely. I love Chick-fil-A. Every Saturday we do a Chick-fil-A run. So it's, an, it's a great experience to simply have, have to do a curbside pickup uh, and it's so easy. So Thank you for your patience. Um, <laughs> so what we're seeing, I agree with uh, the growth numbers that Nandan was referring to. Here at MasterCard, we, we've seen similar growth traje trajectory um, just last year, you know, for contactless transactions accounted for about 40% of our overall transactions. So 
that's been growing steadily. Just a few years ago, we were in the uh, mid-teens, uh, and now we're at 40%. And if you go into, if you drill down into specific markets, like if you go look at Europe, uh, which has um, much more contactless adoption and penetration, there the number is almost double at 79% uh, of the transactions were contactless. And then if you go further into like a country like Australia, 90% of transactions there are contactless transactions. So we're, we believe that the future is going to be shifting towards uh, MagStripe is going to you know, significantly reduce um, contact transactions where you dip your card. Those transactions, are, we're going to start seeing them decrease. But contactless transactions is going to be the way uh, most of the face-to-face -face transactions are going to happen. Um, and I think the pandemic definitely accelerated some of this growth. Uh, but even prior to the pandemic, we were seeing significant growth, uh, especially in Europe. Um, and the interesting, another interesting data point is that um, these changes or these uh, change in habits are, are going to persist post-pandemic. So just uh, last month, we did a research, uh, a consumer research, uh, and 72% of, of consumers said that they're going to continue to use um, contactless payments even after the, uh, the pandemic. So we think that this is a, this is a trend that um, you know got accelerated by the pandemic, but people are getting used to just simply um, using their card, using their mobile device, using their wearable device um, to to tap and pay for for transactions. Thanks, Sadiq. I, I would think uh, Mastercard recently announced some changes too in the security around contactless. I wonder if you could, you know, when when you, consumers are asked about contactless, they sometimes bring up security as one of their concerns. Could you just talk about that for a minute, that most recent announcement? Yeah, sure. So um, we did uh, just last month, we announced what we referred to as ECOS or enhanced contactless. So kind of um, tracking on to the trend of increased transactions, more and more transactions being contactless, we wanted to make sure that uh, we spend the investment on uh, securing these transactions. So. What enhanced contactless is, is a new specification for contactless payments. Uh, it drives uh, enhanced security. So uh, as part of doing a contactless transaction, there's an interaction between your card and device, um, a mobile device and the reader. And there's cryptography that's involved in order to you know, secure the communication, in order to uh, make sure that this card is a genuine card or the device is a genuine device and the credential is a genuine credential. So that cryptography has been um, enhanced. And uh, so that's the point number one is enhancing the security. I think the second key thing is enhancing privacy. So um, we've kind of taken uh, all the privacy regulations, privacy acts around the world, taken into consideration um, you know, how they define personal identification information, personal data, and what needs to be encrypted. So there's been a lot of enhancements to kind of support those regulations and uh, protect privacy. And then the third, third one I would say is enhancing the user experience. We wanted to make sure that we keep the same consistent user experience that people are used to today. So a simple tap and go. But um, in if and this is more prevalent in in Europe, where you might not be able to tap for certain transactions. So if it is a transaction over a certain amount, it might require you, require you to dip your card or it might require you, you to enter a PIN. So we've kind of streamlined all those user experiences so that contactless can stand alone by itself. It has no dependency on a dip or having to tap multiple times. So I think those are some of the key um, enhancements that we've kind of defined in the new specifications. And we're we're working with industry partners to um, get these specifications implemented, uh, go through our standard testing and certification process. And, uh, you know, we're really excited to enhance the security and get enhanced contactless in the market. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thanks very much. Giovanni, I'll turn it to, to you and we'll talk a little bit, um, one, just around biometric payment as a, uh, as a payment option, and maybe a use case or two that, that uh, that your firm is exploring. And then maybe you can touch a little bit on that security aspect as, as well and how biometric security might work uh, in today's environment and 
how you deal with facial biometrics given a COVID environment where everyone's wearing a mask. Yeah, yeah. So I take on the on the concern regarding security from consumers uh, is, is that part of this uh, concern is related to the fear of they, you know, having their uh, credit card being charged without consent, right? Because of a card being accidentally held uh, close to an NFC payment terminal. So uh, uh, the fear, in my opinion, is related to the possibility of a payment being charged without consent. One of one of the fears. Uh, so in in case in case of you know facial biometric payments, consent is something crucial. In our case, for example, we make sure the user is aware uh, its face is being captured via a visual feedback loop uh, where the user sees what the camera is capturing at the payment checkout. So, so facial biometric uh, payments might raise you know, other concerns regarding data privacy, for example, but definitely not this concern uh, regarding the lack of consent uh, for, for having a a payment being charged. Uh, so, in the we we explore. You know, we we have been uh, doing the facial biometric payments in in uh, in a number of different use cases. Uh, for example, uh, we 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 can we can consider uh, you know facial biometrics for payments in retailers, uh, supermarkets, uh, etc., ranging from that to passenger authentication in public transportation, right? So we have been operating in these cases uh, with touchless experiences, for example, uh, with the largest supermarket chain in Colombia. And, uh, and uh, with MasterCard uh, Europe, for example, we have, we have done uh, proof of concept for passenger authentication at buses in Madrid, quite interesting. So in all these cases, the, the biometric profile uh, is linked to a card or on an account of some sort. And um, the, hor the horizon for this, I, I believe, is fast. Uh, we, can, we can see a future where some sort of biometrics is, is all that is needed to charge some amount from, from someone. And how has the, uh, how's the registration process, you know, to use biometrics, it would seem like you have to pre-register and, and allow for your biometric um, credentials to be used. And how, how does that process work and how, how has it worked for you? Yeah, so uh, we, we, we provide the, the, uh, everything related to facial biometrics for KYC purposes as well. So our clients integrate our technology with others, like from, from bureaus. Uh, there are countries where we actually have can compare faces directly with official databases. And then that makes the KYC processes quite easier. So uh, even via a bureau where we can make sure that the face uh, is of the real person or, or uh, by checking uh, the face that is in, in, the, in the ID against the selfie, the live selfie that the person does at the enrollment, we we can we can make sure that the person is is the very same it's claiming to be. Great, uh, Nandan. Maybe I'll I'll turn it back to you. Just talking about security uh, as well. Just you you discussed a number of different use cases uh, as you've talked to your clients or as your clients talk to their consumers. Uh, what concerns do they have, and does it does it vary by some of the various use cases that you that you outlined earlier? You're on mute, London. How's that? Can you hear me? That's better, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, so, Bob, I was going to say maybe it's the pandemic um, and maybe it's just the need is so high. Security has not been a factor from our largest merchants in adopting or further enhancing their touchless capabilities. Um, we do regular consumer studies also um, on various different topics, 
And security is always a concern as it relates to payments, but it's not indexed any higher for contactless or for uh, touchless payments. So I, I can't say that security is a over burgeoning issue for our largest brands. But I will tell you that as non-NFC contactless payments and merchant wallets that, that are driven using QR technologies that are not as well governed as NFC is, uh, the potential for risk, in my humble opinion, increases. So we're very careful in how we architect solutions for the grocery industry, for example, because there is a huge demand set there. And as we construct these solutions, um, our default is industry standards, maybe kind of the QR that, that's being used or some of the encryption capabilities, uh, cryptograms, so on and so forth. Very good. Well then uh, more broadly, Sadiq, coming back to you, when you think about the various uh, contactless subcategories, I'll call them, so you have wallets, you have cards, uh, you have uh, maybe as very issues types like biometrics that we were just talking about. Do you see the growth trajectory different for all those or are they all moving at about the same pace? Or, or what are some of the underlying drivers that you think? Yeah, and no, so I think, um, again, it depends from market to market. We see, uh, like, for example, in the UK, that's a, we see a lot more card usage. So consumers have, you know, had access to contactless cards much before, you know, the wallets became very popular. So we see a larger number of uh, transactions that are being initiated with contactless cards. Whereas, for example, in the US, when we just did a recent study of uh, transactions that were done on the New York MTA. So New York Transit enabled open loop contactless transactions. And overwhelmingly, like 74% of transactions were initiated using a mobile device. And I think that's also a factor uh, for the US market because our US market is still kind of going through that transition of converting uh, chip cards to contactless cards. So a lot of consumers may not have a contactless card or may not even recognize that they can tap their card. So um, in, in the US market in particular, we see a larger usage and adoption of, of mobile payments and transactions that are initiated contactlessly are mainly from mobile devices. Um, I do also want to comment on, on the uh, security aspect of it. So we're, one other uh, cool thing that's happening is we're also integrating biometrics into cards. So biometric cards are starting to gain a lot of traction. And uh, from a user experience perspective, that kind of brings a level of consistency. So regardless of whether you're using your mobile device, you do your touch ID and tap, or you're using your card, now you can just do a biometric authentication on the card and, and tap your card as well. So. Uh, I think that those are some of the areas that are going to drive further growth, further um, adoption. Um, uh, with regards to facial, um, I know MasterCard, um, maybe about two or three years ago, we did we did a, a, a pilot program for facial payments or facial recognition payments, and it was colloquially called Selfie Pay. Um, we did get a lot of uh, interesting feedback from that. Uh, I think the technology is there. Um, it's it's about it's a matter of trying to navigate um, the consumer preferences, data privacy laws. So if you look, consumers today are very comfortable unlocking their phone with Face ID, right? So um, it's their device; they're looking into it, and they feel very comfortable using their facial uh, recognition to unlock the device. But um, will they be? Will they have a similar comfort for? if other devices, like if there's cameras on buses, if they're gonna be comfortable, um, you know, ha having pictures taken and on in order to authenticate a transaction. Um, I feel like we, we, but there's still a ways to go in terms of navigating the, the rules, the regulations, the privacy requirements uh, in order to enable that. But interestingly, even back in 2019, when I was in Brazil, um, I was seeing very, um, uh, interesting use cases for use of facial recognition. So one quick example I'll give you 
and maybe Giovanni, you're familiar with this. So um, in the buses, they have uh, contactless readers along with a camera on top of the reader. So as you uh, get onto the bus and tap your card within that sm small fraction of a second when you tap your card, a picture is also taken. And it's not for the main mainstream payment authentication. It is for other things like um, there are government benefit cards. So if you are being given up a government benefit cards, it is only meant for you to use for free, free travel. And if somebody else is using it, they deactivate that, that, that particular card saying that, you know, this card was given to a certain person, but now another person is using it. Therefore, we are no longer going to, you know, accept that card. Uh, so things like where you have free travel, we have passes. I think it makes a lot of sense saying that this particular payments instrument is tied to a specific per person. And if that person is not using it, um, you know, trying to limit limit the use of those transactions. I think, I think those are some of the uh, practical uses that I've seen. And I think as we kind of move into the future, we'll see more and more such use cases. Yeah. Have you seen um, have you seen reduced fraud as a result of contactless compared to non contactless payments? I'd ask that of, of uh, anyone on the panel. Yeah, I would just say more generally, um, contactless transactions typically tend to be cash displacement. Um, so definitely from a mag stripe, we can see there's at least like a seven basis points difference between uh, fraud from mag stripe transactions compared to chip transactions. So the more contactless transactions we see, we we'll definitely see reduced fraud. Giovanni Nandan, any, any uh, comments from you? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm quite aware of this uh, use case that Sadiq mentioned, yeah, to prevent fraudsters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I'd add just one more thing to what Sadiq said. So we um, have a fairly large pin on glass use case. This is where you're entering a pin onto your mobile device instead of a what in our industry is called a PED certified hardware device. And we've rolled this out to what are called SNAP EBT cards. Um, these are cards the federal government gives out uh, for food substance for families. Uh, they used to be called food stamps. And sadly, there are 40 million EBT cards in the country right now. So those cards would not, could not be, um, uh, were not contactless or touchless or e-com capable. So we created a mechanism to enter your PIN uh, on glass uh, on your mobile phone. And actually, uh, one of our largest retailers, who's one of the first to adopt this, they've actually seen a 100 basis point decline in fraud by the, the PIN technology moving to the digital world. Now, that those are very early days, Bob, so it's, uh, I wouldn't, you know, it's nothing more than a data point. It's not a trend right now, but it's kind of interesting. Great. Yeah, that's very interesting. We want to wrap up in the next couple of minutes here and allow the audience to ask some questions. So maybe one last general question to all three of you as you think about the contactless ecosystem defined broadly, because I think we defined it broadly here this afternoon. Where do you think there, there are a lot of uh, founders and people that work at fintechs in the audience? Where do you think the the opportunities lie or where's the future going where maybe there's there's opportunities for other players in the ecosystem as we look at that, the entire contactless uh, value chain of payments. So maybe I'll just start by saying that um, We've seen we've seen a tremendous amount of innovation happen. You know, going back, I think like 2012, 2013, we were trying to roll out contactless cards at a scale, uh, and then working with Google, rolling out Google Wallet, working with Apple, getting Google uh, Apple Pay out, and then Samsung. So we're starting to see contactless not just be limited to cards, but move to mobile devices, move to um, wearable devices. So we're seeing a huge trajectory of growth uh, of transactions happening from wearable devices. So I think that's an interesting space to see where else can um, contactless transactions be initiated. We've seen some exciting um, startups embedding 
contactless payments into rings, into uh, other kind of wearable formats. Um, so I think um, we're, we're going to continue to see a lot more. And then on the acceptance side, we're seeing um, how do we make acceptance more easily available? So, you know, tap on phone, uh, how can, you know, small merchants, micro merchants who have their existing phone, which is NFC capable, how can they be enabled uh, to accept contactless payments using their existing phone and not have to um, buy specialized equipment? So I think there's all kinds of possibilities to grow contactless payments, not just on the issuance side, uh, in terms of how consumers uh, trigger payments, but also on the merchant acceptance side on how they can accept contactless payments. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, in general, um, you know, I, I see progress in, 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 progress in payments uh, being made through technologies that, you know, either increase, increases security or, or increases convenience for to the end customer. And uh, there are technologies that can address one end, technologies that can address the other end, and technologies that can address both ends at, at the same time. And I believe biometrics is one type of technology that, uh, that it, it is in this category, if not the only. Well, uh, facial biometrics is a, a clear example of technology that boost the security and, and radically boost the user experience. Uh, if we consider, for example, what we have been calling naked payments, you know, which is would be the ability of paying in the in physical world without any belongings. You, know? you don't have to you don't have to, to to hold anything, you don't have to carry anything with you and still being able to pay. So um, I see in the landscape for, for the near term, in terms of innovation in facial biometrics, uh, in, in terms of innovation in payments, that facial biometrics would be quite impactful uh, for in-store payments. Uh, but you know, looking a little bit further in the future, uh, I think facial biometrics is still transitional. You know, for the long term, you know, we're going to push this combination of security and, and user convenience to the limit, I, I believe. And, uh, and we will transition from biometrics payments to, to, I don't know, we can call invisible payments, maybe. So, uh, so we see already cases where payments are almost invisible, right? For riding a cab, for example. Uh, but bringing this invisible payment to in-store payments is, is not, not that trivial. Um, if, even in, in the limit, you know, thinking of 20 years ahead, you will, need, you will still need to ask for a consent uh, uh, from the customer to, to charge some amount of uh, their payment method. But eventually via a combination of technologies, most of them related to you know, touchless biometrics, long distance facial biometrics, gait recognition, things like that. You couldn't, in the limit, allow a payment by only a thumbs up in store, you know. So, so uh, my, my bet is still going uh, towards biometrics, but um, more, more fancier than what we, we have in place right now. And uh, of course, all that while combining, uh, while uh, addressing data privacy concerns, and which is quite crucial for this to, to, to be put in place. Great, Giovanni. That's, a, that's probably a good spot to leave it there when we talk about naked payments or invisible payments as the, uh, the outer limits of, of contactless. Uh, you know we're moving to contactless when even the casinos in Las Vegas are working at figuring out how they can get rid of cash uh, out on their floors. So I think there's a lot of room for growth uh, in this area. Uh, with, with that, I'm, that's going to be the end of the, the formal panel discussion, but we're happy to take more questions. Uh, I think I'll turn it back over to you, Jasmine, for what, what the next steps are. Sorry, I had issues with my camera there for a minute. No, that was a great discussion. Thank you for that. I always love following up after naked payments. You're like, there's, <laughs> there's my cue to come back on stage. Um, no, it was, a, it was a great panel. Thank you all um, so much for joining us tonight. 
Um, and thank you, KPMG, for partnering with us and PayCLT. Um, thank everyone for attending. Um, at this time, if there aren't any more audience questions, um, you can feel free to drop, or I will leave Rima open for a little bit longer if anyone would like to stay on um, and network and um, have a little bit more deeper conversation. Um, but with that, thank you so much, and a big round of applause for everybody. Thank you, and thanks to all the panelists. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Have a great night, everyone. Have a great night. Cheers. Bye. Bye.